In this video, I'll walk you through how to generate PDF files in a .NET Core application. We'll be using a very easy to use library that follows a fluent API approach, allowing us to combine simple elements together to create complex documents. So let's get started. First, let me give you an overview of the project. We have an API controller named invoice controller and within that, we have a generate PDF method which we'll be implementing soon. Additionally, we have a service called invoice rendering service responsible for generating the PDF file. We'll be working on the generate invoice PDF method shortly. In the program class, you can see that the service is registered as a singleton service. Now, for PDF generation, we'll need to install a library from NuGet packages. We'll be installing a library called Quest PDF, an open source .NET library for generating PDFs. It uses several modern patterns and practices and it's designed to overcome the challenges involved in this process. So, let's start by implementing the generate PDF method of our invoice controller. Remember, you can download the entire source code of this project from our Patreon community. Join our community to level up your skills and avail exclusive benefits. To populate the details of the invoice, I've already created model classes. In the invoice model class, we have properties like invoice number, invoice date, a client object, and a list of invoice item objects. The client object contains properties such as client name and client address. The invoice item holds the item description, quantity, and unit price. Using a different library, I'm generating an invoice object with some fake data. Now, we can generate the PDF document using the invoice rendering service by passing the invoice object as a parameter. After that, we simply return the file and the content type should be set to PDF. We'll name the download file invoice.pdf. We'll create the document using the document.create method. From there, we can use the generate PDF method to return the PDF document as a byte array. Inside the document, we can create a page. You can design multiple pages within a single document if needed. For instance, you could have a cover page as the first and the detailed pages afterward. But in our example, we only need a single page design. Let's assign a few properties to the page. We'll set the page size to A4 and the margin to 2 cm. Now, this will display a blank page. To make the development process smoother, Quest PDF offers a tool called Quest PDF Companion, which provides a preview of your document. With hot reload functionality, you'll be able to see real-time results without needing to recompile the code. You can download the Quest PDF Companion application from their official website. Before returning the result, we'll call the ShowInCompanion method. Additionally, we need to assign a license to use the Quest PDF library. The license details are available on the official website and we'll be using the community license. Let's assign the license in the class constructor and as you can see, we have all the types available. I'll choose the community license. Now, I'm running the application with the companion application opened. When we execute the API method, you'll notice that the companion app shows a preview of the document. Let's continue designing the page. The page consists of three different elements. The page header, the page content, and the page footer. First, let's begin with the page header. We'll display the company details along with the invoice text in this section. Two major layout elements that we'll be using are row and column. A row container aligns the items within it as multiple columns, while a column container aligns items as multiple rows. So here, we'll use a row container to align these two items as different columns. Inside the row, let's add a column container since we need to align these two items as different rows. After making the changes, I'm doing a hot reload and the updates are displayed in the companion application. We can also apply some formatting to the text. Next, we'll add the second item in the row container. I'm also calling the show once method, ensuring that this item only appears on the first page 
and not on any subsequent pages. Now, let's move on to the page content. Here, we'll start by adding a column container to align the child items as two different rows. Using the row and column containers, we can align the items properly on the page. Let's add some space by assigning padding to the content. We can now display the client name from our invoice object. In the same way, I'm displaying other components by assigning values from the invoice object. Next, we can add a table inside our main column container. For the table, we first need to assign the column definitions. When adding a column definition, we can choose the column size. A constant column will have a fixed size, while a relative column adjusts its size based on the other columns. In total, we need five columns. Now, let's create the table header. The table header is showing in the preview. I'll add some space and format the header text and also place a line by assigning a bottom border to a cell with a column span. Next, we can iterate through all the items and populate the table content. I'm also assigning a different background color for alternating items. After placing another line as we did before, we can display the total amount. Let's add one more item in the column to display a message. Finally, in the page footer, I'm adding a column container with just a text item. In this text item, we'll display the current page number and the total page count. Now that we've completed the design, we can remove the show in companion method. Now, when we call the API method, we can download the file. Let's open it. And here is our PDF. This is just a basic design, but with Quest PDF, you can create much more attractive and stylish documents. I've moved the page design to a separate class named Invoice Template 1 and added it as a dependency. To help you understand the concepts more clearly, I've also added another template called Invoice Template 2. We can easily switch between templates by changing the reference here. I'll now demonstrate Invoice Template 2 by running the application. Let's download the file and open it. In this document, you'll notice that I'm displaying images to make it more visually appealing. You can refer to this template in the source code available in our Patreon community. Join our community to level up your skills and avail exclusive benefits. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. See you all in the next video. Thank you.